We're back aboard for part three of Shipping TV's unique video series, North Sea Roro, filmed as we sail to Rotterdam and back aboard DFDS Seaways, Freight Only Roro Ferries, Suecia Seaways and Selandia Seaways. Today, we're aboard Suecia Seaways for the last time in the series, because in part four, we'll be aboard Selandia Seaways. On deck, crew members are scrubbing the ship down, fighting the steel ship's constant battle with rust. On the bridge, the captain and one of the officers are sailing the ship towards Holland. In the accommodation area, the driver's mess room and lounge is empty as the ship is not carrying any accompanied vehicles on this trip. But it often is in use for evening and overnight sailings. It makes sense for hauliers who have to cross from Holland. The drivers can take a rest period while the truck and cargo are still making mileage and crossing the North Sea. On the port side of the accommodation block, here's the crew's mess deck, all set up for lunch. The curry, I'm delighted to tell you, made by the Filipino catering team was excellent. There's also a very comfortable lounge for a doze and I managed to make good use of that too for an after lunch half hour. The ship can accommodate up to 12 drivers and truck crew as passengers in single and double cabins, complete with compact shower and toilet rooms. A bit more roomy than the truck cabs for a change. And now, the port of Rotterdam. We are approaching uh, Rotterdam Harbour. There's also a lot of traffic here. There's, we are crossing through uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different VTA zones right. where we have to check up of traffic and so on. Be very careful about listening of what is go going around us. Mm -hmm. Today we have yardsmen and a single single tanker. There's also some outbound traffic as well, but it's not so busy. There can be busy places here now and then where we have mm -hmm. to sail like a snake before we, because we need to keep up our sailing schedule. Right. So if we are slowing down just to let them all pass us, then we are then we will be behind. So sometimes it has to be us that are ahead. So, but, but we are coming here every day more or less. So we know what to do. We'll be alongside half past uh, five, more or less exactly on time, hopefully. And everybody yeah. will like you if you're on time. Yeah, we can hope. <laughs> <laughs> Although the new waterway is relatively quiet today, there are still things to see, like Stenner Line's Hook of Holland Terminal, with just one ferry alongside this afternoon. Incidentally, the new waterway is what it was called in 1872, when it was first constructed. There's also another ship with a matching colour scheme to ours, DFDS Seaways Anglia Seaways, the smallest of the three ships working this service, just 142 metres long against our 197 metres. She's about half our gross tonnage too and doesn't yet have a scrubber fitted.
Although we haven't seen any big ships today, there is a constant flow of smaller craft, short sea traders, river and inland barges, product tankers and others. This is the new waterways flood control system, a pair of massive gates which can be closed if a tidal surge or other potential flood event is possible. This pair of tugs belong to Dutch company Co-Tug, who have a strong presence here in Rotterdam. They also now have a small fleet of tugs on the Thames, where they started to operate when London Gateway, the UK's newest port, opened back in 2013. This couple of apartment buildings really are eye-catching. The eastern bank of the waterway has some smart looking residential areas and some attractive and historic small towns too. There are no bridges over the waterway. This ferry is the only crossing point between the sea and Rotterdam itself. For people who work at Europort and on the western side, it saves miles of travel on very busy roads. They know we are coming then, then they are <laughs> disappearing. Huh? I see. <laughs> the DFDS terminal at Bladingen is coming up on our port side. Volkenhaven Basin has a tight entrance which Suasia Seaways has to enter astern and with the tide flooding up the river Captain Nielsen has to do his party piece a 180 degree turn finally placing his ship in position to back in through the entrance channel. It's a very neat manoeuvre carried out by the captains of all these vessels for a flood tide entry. The captain is on the bridge wing, the chief officer is there beside him and the Port Authority patrol boat is in place to block oncoming traffic. So it's time to begin.
No, indeed, so I shall be okay, man. Within a few minutes of the last rope being made fast, the first trailer tug is aboard and the unloading process is in operation. Within hours, some of these trailers will be halfway across Europe. Suasia Seaways will be alongside here for between three and four hours, and while some of the crew will get some sleep, work goes on aboard around the clock. For me, it's time to go to the nearby hotel for the night. A shower and a couple of beers will go very nicely. But tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock I must be here at the terminal again, ready to board Sealandia Seaways for the journey back to the UK. So in part four of this series, we'll be aboard Suasia Seaways' sister ship, DFDS Sealandia Seaways, heading out of the terminal basin and down the river to the sea. See you soon.